Hey, my name is Ed Malthaus. I'd like to welcome you to IMC 451, Statistics for Marketing Decisions. Uh, I'm going to introduce the syllabus in this video. Um, before I do that, I just want to mention that I think this course is the foundation for all of the marketing analytics sequence. Uh, so you're going to have a good foundation after this course in understanding what analytics can do for you, what, um, how, how to evaluate analytics and research that you um, uh, are presented with in your, in your business life, as well as doing uh, various analytical tasks uh, uh, in, in your job. I'm going to let you read through the objectives. You can do that on your own. I've, I've uh, worded that very carefully. Uh, let's talk briefly about the course materials. So my course is organized a little bit differently than a lot of the online courses in that it's all built around a course packet. So this document that we're looking at together right now is the course packet. And you should have a copy of that. I've emailed it to you. If not, you can get it from the, um, from the Blackboard website. So th this is going to be kind of your first resource. It has all of my lecture notes. It has links to videos. It has solutions to problems in Siegel, the, the textbook. And it also has a lot of uh, previous exam questions that are meant to be a little bit more challenging than what you find in Siegel. The second uh, course material that you definitely want to get is the textbook. So this is the book by Andrew Siegel. I have a copy of it right here. This is a standard MBA level uh, decision science stats uh, textbook. Uh, the one that I'm holding right now is the sixth edition. To be honest with you, there haven't been many changes in the book since about the third edition. So if you wanted to use uh, third, fourth, or even fifth edition, that's probably completely fine. You're, you're not going to run into any problems. Uh, I just got an email from the publisher, which is Elsevier, and you can click here and get a discount um, between now and I think October 15th. So if you go to this website, um, I think you can get uh, the uh, the uh, e-version for, for $60 and the print version for $75. Um, this book also talks a lot about marketing research, and so you may wish to consult a marketing research textbook. Um, for many years, I taught marketing research using Churchill's book, the one, uh, one I have in front of me. I think this is a great book. There are many other market research books. If you go to any uh, library, I'm sure you'll find uh, some copies. So just, just find a market research, and that'll supplement some of your uh, readings. Here's a list of some other books you might want to look through. As for um, grades, the way I think of um, the difference between an A and a B student is as follows. So a B student is somebody who can work through problems exactly like those in Siegel. So the way just about every stats book is organized is that there's um, a section, and that section will introduce some topic, and then they'll, you'll find one or two examples that illustrate how you, you know, apply whatever this method is to solving a, a, a problem. Then if you flip back to the exercises, you'll see that uh, there's maybe 10 to 20 exercises that are almost exactly like the one in the uh, example or examples that were worked in the section. All right, so um, kind of the first level of mastery is being able to do the problems that, um, you know, that, that were illustrated in the, in the textbook. And so, you know, the, the homework problems will be just like those. Maybe they, they will give you a slightly different um, context, and the numbers will usually be different. But, um, you know, I, I, I expect B students to be able to do problems exactly like those. Uh, what's an A student, then? So an A student is a student whose level of mastery is, is deeper. So not all the problems you're going to encounter in real life are like those in Siegel. So an A student is someone who, um, you know, who's very comfortable with the material to the point of 
when they encounter a new situation, uh, they recognize, aha, you know, that, that, that's um, you know, from section 6.4 in Siegel. Uh, but then if I mix that with something from chapter 3, uh, I can solve this completely new problem. So uh, an A student's level of mastery is at that level. So, so they, are, they, have, they just have this deeper understanding. So what you'll find on my exams is that there are a lot of problems that are quite easy. They'll be exactly like those from Siegel. And you'll find some others that are going to challenge you uh, substantially more. And these are meant to separate the A's from the B's. This year, I'm, I'm changing my evaluation a little bit from in the past. In the past, I've had one midterm and a final. That's, that's the way it's been since 1997 when I started teaching this course. This year, uh, we're going to have two midterms. Uh, so week four, week seven, and then the final exam in week 11. The complaint that I had last year was that um, the, the midterm uh, covered a little bit too much material, and often it's kind of a wake-up call. Uh, and the students want that wake-up call earlier if they're, um, if they're not working hard enough. So that's why I'm, I moved to midterm to week four. Exam policies. So you're going to have two take-home exams for the midterms in this class. Uh, I will distribute those exams usually on a Thursday night, and you'll have uh, four or five days. Uh, uh, it's, it's listed in the syllabus uh, to complete that. So you work on it at home, you email it to me, and that's, that's what you'll do for your midterms. For the final exam, you have to schedule a time with Proctor U or something like that. Um, there's a, a, a link on the Blackboard website under Assignments that will take you to that. So you're going to need to schedule that at some point for your final exam. You have to be proctored for that. Uh, you, you pick a time. You, it's like a three-hour block of, of time in early December, and they're going to watch you using the camera on your computer. Um, I would not do it this way if I had, uh, if, if it were my choice, but, um, but you know, people feel like we need to have a proctored exam for this class and a couple others. There's a little bit more advice. You can read through all that on your own. When it comes to office hours, I list all the office hours that I have, even though a lot of these are not for your section. So um, I'm going to have office hours for the distance students on Wednesday nights. We'll run an Adobe Connect section se session. Uh, we'll schedule that together and, you know, these things tend to be really um, useful, I think. I, I did it last year, and uh, the students really appreciated having um, you know, the opportunity to, to discuss things. So uh, we'll schedule that every Wednesday night at some point after you know your schedules for the other classes. You can read about honesty, plagiarism, and cheating on your own. Uh, how to be successful in this class. So statistics in, in a is, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by it. Um, I think the way to be successful is simply to practice. It's, it's really not any different than, um, you know, learning to play the piano. At one point in my life, I was a very uh, bad piano player. And, um, you know, th th there were points where I improved. And the reason I improved was because of practice. You know, if you play a song a hundred times, you're going to be... Um, uh, it's, you're going to get better at it than uh, the first or second time that you try it. So it's exactly the same way with statistics. If you work the problem, work a problem for the first time, you're going to struggle. Um, by the tenth or twentieth problem, uh, you're going to start to feel real comfortable with it. Uh, it's the same if you if you've ever done sports. So you, you've got to just uh, you know you've got to have a lot of repetitions and. The more repetitions you have, the more fluent, the more comfortable you're going to feel with the material, and the better you'll you'll uh, do, the easier you'll find the problems. Then the more more you do it, it's kind of like uh, you know. I have another analogy with running. If you start running today, you're going to feel very sore, and and you're not going to be able to go very far. But after you run for a you know a couple weeks, then all of a sudden running a couple miles doesn't seem like um, anything too hard. So practice, practice, practice is, is really the, the, the key to this class. Um, a lot of the distance students have been saying, you know, there's 
30, 40 problems a week, and if you do those, you're good to go. And that, that's, that's probably about right. Um, there's another video that explains the course packet in a minute, and uh, I encourage you to watch that, and you'll see where those problems are. All right, as for statistical software, uh, you, you, you'll want to use software just because uh, stats is made a whole lot easier um, because of various software packages. Up until this year, so for the past 15 years and, and before I started teaching this course, SPSS has been the main um, uh, stats package for this class. Uh, SPSS is a pretty standard tool. It's quite easy to use. Um, it's also a way to differentiate ourselves from a lot of MBA programs that never get beyond Excel. So you're going to be learning to use a, a real stats package that will make, make your life pretty easy once you get the hang of it. It's, it's not that hard. It's all menu driven. Um, this year I've decided to introduce another stats package which is R. So R is completely optional. Let me repeat that. R is completely optional. You don't have to learn R. However, uh, R is becoming somewhat of a of a standard. It, it's, uh, it's certainly desirable to have R on your resume. And so, you know, some of you may want to learn it. So R is an open source program. SPSS you have to buy. Um, it's like $50 for a year-long license. With R, you get it for free. Um, the problem with R is that it's a bit more complicated to use. So if you're, if you're good with computers, and if you've done some programming at some point in your life, you're going to absolutely love R. Um, if you haven't done that, just stick with SPSS and don't mess with R. There's an, a New York Times article, if you click on this, that will... Um, actually, I'm not sure where that New York Times article is. I'll make it available to you. A few other conventions in the course packet. Anything in green font is an Excel command, because I, I think it's important to learn the Excel as well as the SPSS commands. Uh, in a lot of business situations, you're not going to have SPSS, and all you'll have is Excel. So you might as well uh, pick up some of those commands. Anything in red is going to be a command in R, and I'll use Courier for both of those. So that's a, about it for the course packet, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me or post something to the discussion boards.